That's right, we're back, hello, episode 19, ladies and gentlemen, that's right, hello, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, I hope everyone's having a wonderful night, whenever, wherever you're watching this, okay, it doesn't matter, I hope it's wonderful, I hope it's great, as I adjust the settings on my microphone live, okay, um, that's it, man, uh, it's Saturday, uh, at the time of this recording, well, yeah, actually, at the time of this recording, it is Saturday, um, it's still, uh, it's not still Friday, I don't know what I was trying, it's, it's four in the morning here, back in, back in, back in time, um, why do I record so late? Because that's how I roll, okay, so, you're just gonna have to deal with that, ladies and, 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 and germs, okay, so, is there anything going on? I mean, not really. Pretty much same old, same old, to be honest. Played a bunch of Skyrim. Started a new character. His name is Aranis. He is a high elf, I believe, and he is a mage. So, you know, he's a master in conjuring and destruction and all that, and he's sneaky, and I really love it. I think it's great. Um, I want to give a shout-out to Skyrim. I want to give a shout-out to the mods, of Skyrim. That's what I really want to give a shout out to. Fuck Skyrim, okay. It's the mods that you really want to give a shout out to because they have made that game so incredible. Okay? It's 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 fantastic. I'm thinking about uninstalling open cities because that is making my game crash a lot. Um not a lot, but it does crash because, you know, it's gotta load in an entire city. So I don't know, I think I might, I think I might uninstall that, but then do Divine Cities, so that way, you know, uh, at the very least, I still have, like, some type of experience, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, man, uh, other than that, you know, I, I love that every single time you play the game, you can play it in a different way if you really wanted to. I haven't even, I haven't even gone to Whiterun. I haven't even set foot in Whiterun yet, like, at all. And the more I play the game, the less I go to Whiterun. I just, I, like, so, right now I've got four characters. I've got Seerthrax, she's an Argonian, and she is a two-hand, she's, I like to say they major, as if, like, they've gone to college, but, like, I just, that's just the best word I can think of. So she's majoring in two-handed and heavy armor. I don't remember what else she majors in. I just know that those are the two main ones that she was doing her thing with. Um, she lives in Whiterun. And then there's uh, uh, Tharnir. He is a Khajiit. He majors in sneak and speech and lockpicking and archery. Um, he lives in Riften, and he's married. And then there's Thorstein. He's a Nord. He majors in blocking and one-handed. And he's smithed. He's a, he majors in smithing. He lives in solitude. And then finally we've got Aranis. He, like I said, he's a mage in destruction, and he's a lockpick and a smith, and, no, not a smith. Well, they're making him a smith, but right now he's lockpicking and sneaking and all that sort of stuff. Not archery. Um, and, yeah, um, he lives in Falkreath, you know? I mean, I have, I've really been curating my characters and their personalities and just how they go about things. I Like, down to their age. So, Sirithrax is the youngest. Okay, she's 24. Okay, Tharnir is right behind, is right in front of her. He is, I want to say, like, early, I want to say, like, uh, just the ripe age of 30. 30 years old. And then, you've got Aranis. No. How old? Okay, Sirithrax is 20, Sirithrax is the youngest. Aranis, I want to say, is like 28. 28, 29, we're going to say 28. Tharnir, we're going to say, is like 33, because he's married. So, like, this is around the age where he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relax, you know. So, we're going to say like 33, going on 34. And then Thorstein is the oldest, okay. He is 50. We're going to say like between the age of like 49 and 52. Like, he's, he's weathered, you know, he's, he's been to jail, he's lost an eye, you know. Um... And they all go about Skyrim in completely different ways, and I love it, and I'm having so much fun. And, uh, yeah, man, I stopped playing Power Watch Simulator, and I started playing uh, Sniper Elite. Shout out to that game. Carl, if you're watching this, or if you're listening to this, either way, I hate you, 
and you are a pain in the ass. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, uh, other than that, we've been, me and my brother have been watching Broad City, and uh, uh, we just finished, what's it called, with Sylvester Stallone, Tulsa King. We just finished Tulsa King. It was good. I actually liked it. Sylvester Stallone is a really good actor, and there's a lot of very decent acting in that in that show. I really, I, I think it's really good, you know. Um, around the end, it kind of started to railroad a little bit, but other than that, you know, it was a pretty decent show. I really liked it. Um, still watching Broad City. I love Broad City, man. I mean, we're literally, we're, me and my brother are literally just watching ourselves if we were girls who just lived in New York. Like, that's pretty much it. Um, it's, it's a really good show, and I just, I just wanted to talk about that. Is there anything else going on? Not that I know of. Um... I'm trying to think. I feel like there is something. It's like floating around in my head, but I can't see it. I can't really think about anything, to be honest. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to hop straight into this because we've got a lot to talk about here. So, Matt Men's Andrew Zarian said when he asked around about what WWE's plan is for... Man, Matt Men's Andrew... I don't know how to start all the way over, but I'm just going to because I have already. Matt Men's Andrew Zarian said when he asked around about what WWE's plan is for the Rock at WrestleMania 40, given the chaotic nature of what went down with his heel turn at the WrestleMania XL kickoff press conference, he was repeatedly told to, quote, just let this play out. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with what I was just referring to, the WrestleMania XL press conference had a bunch of different stuff happen. I'm going to be 100% honest with you right now. I don't give a fuck about what else happened at the XL press conference. I didn't even watch what else happened at the XL press t- conference. I don't give a shit, okay? What I want to talk about is how they fixed, how they fixed it, because they fixed it. They fixed it. So... What happened? Seth came out and he was like, Cody, uh, come out here. I want to I wanna hear who you're going to fight. And then Roman came out and said, hey, fuck all that. Okay, I want to face The Rock at WrestleMania. And then The Rock came out and went, hey, everybody, look at my, look at our family tree. You know, it's only fair that we're family. We're going to fight each other. Also, uh, I want this match to be really good. And then Cody came out and was like, hey, fuck all of y'all. I want to face Roman. Because fuck you and your family shit. And then we didn't say that, but he was like, hey, you know, the way that you're acting right now, your family would be ashamed of you. And then The Rock showed up and he was like, don't talk about my family. And he slapped him. And then a big fight broke out. I want to give a shout out to, so Rock slaps Cody. Seth jumps in. I, I don't know. I don't, maybe it's just baby face type deal, right, kayfabe, like, hey, don't hit him, he's a cool guy, I don't understand why Seth jumped in, the entire segment had, uh, let's be honest, nothing to do with Seth, I don't know why Seth jumped in, that was a bit odd, but whatever, so, and then it cuts backstage, and then their, their, their interview, right, ooh, hold on, uh, Listening at high volume for a long time may damage your hearing. Tap OK to allow the volume to be increased above safe levels. Yeah. Okay. That was odd. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, backstage. Uh, so, d- during the altercation, Nick Aldis, Triple H, and Adam Pierce come out. I have no idea why they're standing out there. Triple H, I can kind of understand. <clears throat> I guess the kayfabe reason is that, <clears throat> sorry, is that it's popping off. So you need everybody out there. You need the muscle out there. But I don't know why Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce were out there. Either way, right? You had all of them out there and it popped off in the interview backstage at Triple H. I don't know who it was. I think it was Kathy Kelly. She was like, hey, what, what's the deal? What's the deal with all that that went down? And she was like, hey, and Triple H was like, hey, we're working on it. And then Roman and Roman and Rock, Rock walked by and the Rock's like, hey, you better fucking fix this. Like, that's literally what he said. They bleeped it out, but that's pretty much what he said. He was like, you better fucking fix it. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I, I know there's something in my throat and I'm trying to... Anyway, so he was like, you better fix it. And then he, and then he walked off. So... I'm going to go, if you could follow me for just a second, that I think is what they meant when they said, hey, we're going to make this more real. We're going to, we're going to sort of lean into the more realism, right? So Matt Man Andrew Zarian said, just let this play out, which I feel like is also kind of sort of like, hey, I'm not going to reveal too much, right? I know what's going on. I'm being told 
I'm sure Sean Ross Tapp kind of has an idea. Dave Meltzer kind of has an idea. Brian Alvarez, you get the point, right? The point I'm trying to make is that they know, but we're not going to tell you because why would we tell you? You know what I mean? And I am, I am so okay with that. I'm so okay with that. You better work my pussy out with this. You understand me? You better use the tongue. I'm talking like the middle finger and the, and the, and the, the ring finger. You better get in there and you better fucking do me right. Okay? Because if if this is going to play out how I think it's going to play out, which again was my theory going forward, and I feel like I, and, and I, I'm, I'm right. I feel right on this theory that it's a triple threat going into mania, right? I, I, I'm so, I'm hyped for this. I'm very excited. I hope it goes the way I think it's going to go. I hope it does. I, I don't know what's going to happen here, right? So, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, it's, it's Rock, Roman, and Cody at WrestleMania. Um, I just, we're going to get into, I don't know, we're going to get into a little bit more. According to PW Insider, in the weeks before Scott Demore was fired by Anthem, he, quote, approached Anthem with an offer to buy TNA outright from them, quote, backed by a letter with a major banking institution. Some people on Anthem's side said it, quote, was seen as a legitimate offer that was worthy of consideration, but Anthem ultimately rejected it. Anthem knew, knows, and kn- will always know exactly what they're fucking doing. They know exactly what they're fucking doing. My man said, I will j- just give me TNA. Apparently, he also knew that he was being fired. He knew that. Like a week in advance, he knew. He said, just, why don't I just buy it from you? Like, just give me the fucking company. They said, hold on one second, we'll think about it. They did a literal 360 in front of him and said, no. Because they know what they're fucking doing. But when when you are in that type of, in that type of line of work and that type of business, that's, that happens. It can happen to you, it can happen to me, it can happen to her, it can happen to him. If you fall out of place with the trajectory of the company, they will flick you off like a scab. And when I tell you that by the time you even realize what's going on, they will be 12, they will be, you will still be on the 25 yard line and they will be in the red zone and they will turn around. And they probably won't even make eye contact with you. And they will shrug. And they go, and they will look, and they will, they will, they will make a little paper airplane and they will throw it at you. And it'll hit you in the eye. And you will open it and it'll just say, Welcome to the league. They knew exactly what they were doing. Scott said, I've got a solution to this problem, to this issue. And they said, No. We we don't want a solution. You want to know why? We've got our own solution. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we all do what I want us to do? It's like, okay, but I don't want that. And and, and Antha went, that is just, man, I, 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 I think I'm supposed to care, but I don't. So, you know, we'll see you around. I hate that this happened to Scott. I'm not the only one that hates that this happened to Scott, right? I, I don't know what Scott's going to do, to be honest with you. I don't think that there is a way to remedy this. Okay. Sorry, I was itching my arm. I don't think there's a way to fix this problem. I think, and that's what I'm trying to, that's my entire, that's it. That is, that's it. There's no renegotiation. There's no, you know, oh, what if we all band together and, uh, no. Because I'm sure that they've thought of that or are currently in the process of thinking that. Right? Right? I'm sure that they have their 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 priorities set and I'm sure they've got contingencies in place. I highly doubt that there is anything that anyone can do to fix this problem. And it's not even a this is the thing. It's not even a problem. This is just how it is. This isn't a problem. If they fired him without cause, that would be a problem. If he wasn't doing anything to hurt the bottom line of the company, right? Which I'm sure he wasn't. 
I'm sure he wasn't laundering money or extorting people or racketeering or physically or sexually. I'm sure he wasn't doing anything wrong. The company as a whole, who were higher up on the totem pole than he was, just said, you're out of here. and That's the end of you. And you're allowed to do that, I would argue. I, I don't know. I'm not a business person, right? Firing without cause just seems a little bit... Uh, stupid, but I, I I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and assume you could just, if you want to, if you have enough power, you could just, you could just fire somebody because, I mean, unless, you know, they can't do that and he's willing to fight it, but he, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot to, there's a lot. There's a, I, there's a lot that I, I know for a fact that I don't know. I just, I know that without even having to Without even having a glance over, I know for a fact that there's stuff that I'm just not aware of and just I don't I don't know enough about to to, you know, make a make a difference in the argument. You know what I mean? So. I mean, that's that's it, really. I mean, that's that's really the end of it, you know, because. If there was something that could be done about it, I feel like, well, I say that, but I, maybe Scott is, I mean, I don't know, like, he's, he's, he was like, oh, I'm going to negotiate, like, what if I did this? And they were still like, no, which, again, goes back to my point of, like, they, they're not, okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about. I, I'm worried about the, now, before, I was so I was looking forward to how TNA was going to turn out. And I really wanted everybody to work with TNA. And you know what? In fairness, that can still happen. Right. Um, but now the, the, the way that they, the way that they, they got Scott out of here really doesn't bode well for the future. Because if that is what they're willing to do to the, to the, 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 I don't know, we're going to say the booker, right? Because I don't think he's the president. Um, if that's what they're willing to do to him, then, I mean, what's stopping them from making another type of decision like that for the company with the company's best interest, even though, you know, that's not, you know what I mean? Like, what does this mean for the future of TNA going forward? Does this mean we're going to have more you know, boneheaded decisions like that? You know, does this mean that they're going to start, they're going to start turning the company into an an image that only they want to see? You know what I mean? Like how Vince was running WWE. Is Anthem going to do that? Is Anthem going to last if that is something that they end up doing? Like there's a lot of, that's what I'm saying. Like there's so much about this that I just, I cannot fully cover because I don't know, and I can't know everything, I can't. I mean, given my current position right now, I cannot, there's nobody that I can go to and ask about this, so I I can only sit from afar and, and I can see the blast, I can see the mushroom cloud, but all I get is like a little gust of wind, and that's it. I don't even get the shockwave from it. I'm not even that. I'm not even that close, you know. So, I think I I don't know, man. If Scott wants to fight this, he can. I feel like Scott's got enough people to talk to, enough connections, enough support, enough financial backing. Where if this was an issue, then. He would be able to fight. He he could fight if he really wanted to, but I I I feel like this is unfortunately just something that happens, and I say that in the sense of like I don't think Scott can do anything about this man. I really don't. I think that I think that this is just how it is, and Scott unfortunately has to take it on the chin, right? Learn for next time, and and that's it. And it fucking sucks that that is the case. That the, that the dream of TNA with Scott DeMore running it is pretty much dead. It's dead in the water. Unless it's got a couple vital... Unless it's got a pulse. Which, I don't... I'm really on the fence about, to be totally honest with you. I, I really am. 
I'm I'm really struggling here to have any type of and I'm just being honest with you. I'm struggling to have any type of confidence in this, you know. I'm I'm thinking to myself, man, like there are companies out there that are like that that are just like, well, you know, if you don't like it, that's just too fucking bad. Like the the companies that do the the surveys or the the public opinion type deal and whether people like it or not, they do it anyway, you know. I think about that sometimes. When companies are like, oh, you know, uh, go online and tell us how you feel, or oh, uh, text this number and vote in, and it's like, bro, what are you voting in for? The company has pretty much already made their decision, you know? So, all in all, I think that in the next couple weeks, we're going to see how this affects the company as a whole. I doubt any wrestlers are going to walk out. I just, that that never happens. You know, I mean, it really, it's up to them. But I, I don't know. I'm just, again, I'm just, I'm just being honest. I just, I don't, I don't think that that is something that they're going to do. I, I really think that they're just going to be like, look, this stinks, but we got to make money, man. You know, so I, I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait. Mercedes Monet has been on AEW's payroll since January for Fightful Select. Numerous options were discussed about when she would debut before they settled on announcing March 13th's quote. I don't know why I do that. March 13th's big business show in Boston. There is, I have to use my phone for this one, folks. I need everybody to hear, to hear this, okay? This is in regards to the women's division that... Tony Khan was talking about, I don't know if this is the, okay, here it is. So I need everyone, I just need everyone to listen to this, okay? So Matt Men's Andrew Zarian says, AEW has a, quote, mission statement to make their women's wrestling better as a whole. That is, quote, a key thing for them this year. And Mercedes Monet will be the centerpiece of that effort once she debuts for the promotion at AEW Big Business on March 13th in Boston. That is like, I locked the phone. I don't know if that if that paused anything. I think it might have. Hold on, we'll have to wait and see. I locked the phone by accident. Hold on a second. Oh my God, we're still going. I can lock the phone and do this? This is great. Hey guys, why are we just now... <coughs> <coughs> he said our mission st- I should Tony our mission statement is to focus on women's wrestling this year this this year we're going to focus on women's wrestling this year and Mercedes Monet is going to help with that so Tony Storm Jamie Hayter Britt Baker Thunder Rosa fucking Every Athena, fucking Queen Aminata, you know, Mariah May, I could go on. Fucking Soraya, Ruby Riot. What the fuck are they fucking doing there then? Hey, Tony, what the fuck are they doing there? Hey, we're going to focus on women's wrestling this year. And, and... And and Mercedes Monet is going to help with that. Let me let me just make sure that I'm not talking out of my fucking asshole. Uh, Mercedes Monet will be the centerpiece of that effort. Hey guys, why the fuck are we putting a fucking effort into that now? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? So what the fucking hell has been going on for the last three fucking years? What are you talking about? That's like that's like fucking eating butter for fucking five years straight. Just eating fucking butter out of the fucking tub. And then you're 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 you can't even get out of bed. And you need a hose to wash yourself down. And you say, you know what? This is the year that I'm going to lose weight. This is the year I'm going to eat healthy. 
And and you know what? You know something? I I woke up today and I saw my my fucking belly fat hanging over the fucking bed and I said, "You know what? I'm going to do something about this." Oh my fucking god, you had all the time in the world. You had all the signs pointing. You had every reason before this moment to say, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. And you didn't do anything. Apparently, apparently, it's four in the morning, I can't shout. Apparently, you didn't do shit about it. You could have done anything about it at any point, at any time. You ha- you, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Thunder fucking Rosa, Tony fucking Storm, Athena, fucking Jade Cargill, fucking... You had all these fucks rolling around, fucking just, just, just rolling in fucking pig shit the whole time. And they stand up and they say, Tony, we're done rolling in the pig shit for you. We've been rolling in fucking pig shit the whole fucking time. Can we get paid now? And Tony's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. I'm not listening to you. I wasn't looking at you. And then Mercedes Monet shows up. And she's like, why would I roll in pig shit on Mercedes Monet? And Tony's like, oh my God, you're so right. Oh my God. What, 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 have, have you guys been rolling in pig shit this whole time? What are you guys doing? Get up. Get up, get out of the pig shit, you idiots. You fucking morons. Mercedes Monet just told, Mercedes Monet just blew my fucking dick hole open with that, with that revelation that you guys have been rolling in pig shit. What are you doing? I could, I could, I could. I could scream. Are you fucking kidding me? Mercedes Monet is just now smacking Tony Khan on the fucking lips and saying, hey, uh, you need to fix this. Holy shit, man. The women's division has been, we're going to say subpar. It's not been dog shit. I'm, there's a lot of instances where it was kind of like, eh, you know, it failed the Bechdel test, for sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. But, I, it's it's not been terrible. It's not been, they've, they, there's not been any broad painting matches and literal mud wrestling matches. It's It's been fine. Right? <laughs> but there's definitely, there's definitely a crowd of people you know, co-mingling with one another and agreeing with themselves when the topic of, hey, the AEW Women's Division could be doing a lot better. And I I don't think I'm wrong in saying that this conversation has been going on for a very long time. I don't want to say since AEW's inception, but I've been hearing this conversation float around for the last, like, year and some change. It's probably been longer than that. And now, all of a sudden, Tony Khan bumped his fucking head on his fucking sink basin. He, 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 he fucking, the toilet seat fucking slammed on his fucking tip of his cock. <laughs> and he went, oh my god, I really need to fix the women's division. I should fucking, oh my god. But you can't do that because he's made of straw. Because he, he he has the same mental fortitude as a fucking seventh grader. Because if 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 it's someone's birthday and they get presents and he doesn't get a, a consolation present, he sits in the corner and crosses his arms and makes noises because he wants people to hear that he's upset. Give me a fucking break here, Con. You fuck. Sorry. Sorry, the women's division is going to be fixed now? After years of the women's... After after Britt Baker fucking carried the fucking women's division. After Jamie Hayter carried the fucking women's division. After Thunder Rosa fucking... I, I, I mean, Fabus fucking killed herself. Not literally. For the women's division. Got put on the shelf for months. Months. Mercedes Monet's fucking t- t- 
It's flying. No offense. I'm just, I'm just, her, her, <laughs> she comes in to the room asshole first. And Tony Khan is like, I've never seen a female before. I, I, I don't even know what that is. What do you mean that you can, what do you mean women can wrestle? Oh my God, we should start doing that. We should put women's wrestling on AEW. I bet that would sell. I bet people would love to see that. We, we, we'll be the first company to ever do women's wrestling. What do you, let me just read this one more time, man. Because I really got to fucking, uh, it, it might just be me. And if it is me, that's fine. Right? I'm okay with that. Zarian says AEW has, quote, a mission statement to make their women's wrestling better as a whole. Does that imply that the women's division has not been good? Are you admitting that the women's division has not been good up to this point? Better as a whole. So it's not been, so, so what the fuck has it been this whole time? What has it been? Because if your first fucking reaction is not, we have a fantastic women's division and we'd like to improve on it. Fair enough. You know what? Fair enough. You want to make it better. I just, the takeaway that I'm getting from that is that it's not as good as it could be, even though you've got a stacked fucking roster. Stacked. Like a fucking deck of fucking cards. Like a fucking teat Three-tier fucking wedding cake. Stacked. And you want to talk about making it better? Hey, I've got a fucking idea. How's about you fucking... You, you put Athena on there and... and, and uh, but that's my own opinion, so I can't really talk. That is, quote, a key thing for them this year. Why is it a key thing for them this year? Why is it a key... Why is it a key... A key, why is it a key thing for them this year? Shouldn't that be something that you work towards perpetually, just indefinitely? Shouldn't that be something like the tag division, the 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 fucking TNT division? Is there even a TNT division? Is there anyone in the TNT division? Is there, am I, I could just be a fuck. Is there anyone in the All-Atlantic division? Is there an All-Atlantic division or just whoever the fuck shows up in front of Orange Cassidy? Because that's what I feel has been going. It's literally just been someone, so Renee will be like Orange Cassidy. And then Orange Cassidy will go, I'm going to face this guy next week. And that's it. And then they have a great match and then Orange fucking wins. If Roger, let me fucking... Let me tell you something right fucking now. I need you to fucking listen to me. I'm, I'm talking to the microphone as though it's a person. Let me tell you something right fucking now. If Roderick fucking Strong doesn't win the fucking All-Atlantic Championship, I really need to stop swearing, but I can't because I am so angry. If Roderick Strong does not win that All-Atlantic Championship, burn the United... What's it? The undisputed cock ring or some shit... Burn it to the fucking ground, disband the faction, and let, and, and fucking put Adam Cole on a fucking trebuchet and get his dumb ass out of the fucking, just get him out. Don't fire him. That's not what I said. Get him out. Wait until this dipshit is healed. Let him be chugs. That's fine. Let him do his thing where he streamed. I don't give a shit. This, this. Wacky way, this wacky waving inflatable arm failing to fuck has been coming out every week. Just, just, hey guys, I just want to let you guys know. This faction is great. That's it. Hey, hey, you see those two? They're great. You see Wardlow? Wardlow's great. Mr. Wardlow? He's great. I'm great. We're great. Everything's great. And that's it. Why the fuck? Sorry, that was really loud. I am so... I, I don't even know where to begin. Monet will be the centerpiece of that effort. Why is she the centerpiece? She's not the women's champion. She should not be the centerpiece. 
Yeah, but she's really popular. I don't give a fuck if she's Jesus Christ herself. She's not the AEW Women's World Champion. You know what you should be fucking doing? Putting emphasis on your women's fuck you on your women's world champion. Because if Mercedes Monet shows up and all the attention is on her, Tony Storm is gonna look like dick cheese in front of her. Tony Storm is gonna look like fucking chlamydia in front of Mercedes Monet, and she's the AEW Women's World fucking champion. Hey, I've got an idea. <clears throat> Why don't we have the Women's World Championship have some fucking merit instead of making it seem like secondary to Mercedes Monet? No offense to Mercedes Monet. I, she's great, right? Made a name for herself in a completely different part of the world. Okay, rightfully so. She's a great wrestler, great character. I love her. I think she's great. Shouts out to her and Naomi. They're, they are amazing. Why the fuck would you have Mercedes Monet come in, right? And be like, hey, everyone, I'm Mercedes Monet. And that's it. And everyone goes, oh my God, she is so right. And then Tony Storm walks in with the fucking world championship on her fucking pussy hanging off of her fucking coochie. Okay. And she goes, hey, everyone. Hey, did you know that I'm the women's world champion? And they go, oh my God, Tony Storm, that is so interesting. But she's Mercedes Monet, you know. And it's like, wow, huh? I guess that's how it is, huh? So then championships mean dick, apparently. I cannot believe this. The centerpiece. Yeah, my you wanna know what else to say? You know what else is the centerpiece? My asshole. It's a centerpiece to my fucking hairy ass cheeks. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. We're going to focus on women's wrestling this year? Uh, Tony Khan, I need you to get on your fucking knees and just, and, 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 and suck my dick from the back. You got to be kidding me, Dean. If you're watching this, man, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. If any of my family members are watching this, I, I apologize, man. I, I'm sorry, but I just, I, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. That makes no, that makes zero sense, man. That makes zero fucking sense. You're going to focus on women's wrestling now. So what the fuck? What are you talking about, man? So that means when you started AEW, you were like, eh, women's wrestling, whatever. I don't really care. You fucking moron, man. Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs> PW Insider notes that Brian Gerwitz will be at, quote, major WWE events going forward, including Elimination Chamber as part of the creative process leading to WrestleMania. So I said, oh, they've got their own rock guy. And then literally like two hours ago, I was like, why did I say that? Nothing in this statement alludes to the fact that this is specifically here for The Rock. And then I looked up Brian Gerwitz, and apparently Brian Gerwitz is like a producer for like one of The Rock's TV shows or some shit. Either way, he's obviously, he is a rock guy. Pretty much, more or less, he's a rock guy. Like, they got him on because The Rock is now involved. And he's, I would say that, for lack of a better term, he, like, knows The Rock pretty well. So if you're going to get anybody, you're going to get Mr. Gerwitz, right? This leads me to believe, and I said this before, this leads me to believe that the storyline involving The Rock, specifically within the bloodline, within Roman Reigns, within Cody Rhodes, within WrestleMania, is going to be very interesting. Now, apparently, Rock is... And both Roman and The Rock are not going to be at Elimination Chamber. So that's very interesting. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that entails. I don't know what that is alluding to. But apparently, we are not going to have The Rock and Roman at Elimination Chamber. Now, I hope that there's going to be a story reason for that. It's kind of dumb that you've got this storyline bubbling. It's simmering right now. It's getting hotter as I am speaking these words, it doesn't make any sense why you would not have The Rock and Roman be at WrestleMania, at Elimination Chamber. At the very least, it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't have them there to further the storyline in some capacity. That seems a bit weird to me. So, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt and assume that maybe there's going to be a story reason for why they're not going to be at Mania. Now, The Rock, we're going to just say he's turned heel. He's turned heel. He's, he's more or less 
He's a, he's we're gonna okay. He's bloodline adjacent copyright trademark. Um, you know of of Ed Boy Incorporated, right? So, with that being said, I am curious how they are going to turn this because Cody won the Royal, won the Royal Rumble. And he said outright, you don't get to make the decision of who faces you at WrestleMania. I do. So I'm facing you at WrestleMania. They made a big sting, which I are which I also said too. They're they're holding off on the decision because they want to make it a big deal. And and I mean, if you're gonna do it anywhere, the press conference is probably the best the best place to do it because you you want eyes on the product. Right? People are asking questions. What's happening with the company and all this sort of stuff? Oh, just just let it play out. That's the fucking point. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm not going to say anything. Because if I told you, you wouldn't really be inclined to watch to see what's going on. Right? So, with all that being said, you've got The Rock bloodline adjacent. Right? Because he did... Man, that, that fucking... Whack ass! I don't know how anybody was supposed to see that because there was a crowd of people. It was a, it was a crowd. It was it was a bunch of fans and reporters and stuff there, right? And I just I don't know how anybody from the back could could see it. Anyway, All right? Rock Rock is bloodline adjacent. How are they going to get the Rock and Roman Reigns on opposite ends of the field here? How are they going to have an offense and a defense in this scenario? That's the question going into WrestleMania is how is how are the personalities going to change? Sidebar, I can't wait for Cody to turn heel and he 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 redies his and actually no, he stops dyeing his hair and it turns black. I can't wait for that. Anyway. So how are they going to spin this? The plan was always for Rock Roman at Mania, right? Which I feel like was the truth. Technically, it is Rock Roman at Mania. And Cody doesn't like that, which is why he's challenging The Rock, or which is why he's challenging Roman at WrestleMania. Anyway, what I'm re- I, so what I'm trying to do right now is I am ruminating in my head, what are they going to do with this storyline going forward? How are they going to incorporate The Rock and Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes into a nicely wrapped present for you to open up at WrestleMania 40? What are they going to do? They've so they've they they've made, they've turned Rock heel. I don't think he's heel. I think that he's upset at the fact that Cody Rhodes insulted his lineage. Pretty much, I don't want to say that that's heel. I think just the fact that he slapped Cody Rhodes sort of implies that he turned heel. I don't really know, to be totally honest with you. I I don't really know what to call it. I don't want to say heel though. Heel seems too strong. Now I haven't seen SmackDown yet, so I I don't know. I maybe they've uh, maybe they've uh, uh, you know elaborated on it, you know. But it just feels like he's not heel. I I can't call him heel. He's sticking up for his family's bloodline. Like that's not a heel thing to do. Hey man, don't talk about my family like that. Smack. Yeah man. I mean, who among us wouldn't? So. And fixed it of like, hey man, like Co- Cody can't just come in here and, and and do that type of stuff, you know. Even though he can, so you can argue that that's a heelish thing to say. Like, hey, he can't he can't come in here and do that. Well, yes, he can. He won the Royal Rumble, so like y- you can't. You don't make the call. Cody does because he won. Because if Cody's winning the Rumble and he's not in any main event at WrestleMania, then what's the point of winning? What's the point of him winning the Rumble? <laughs> you know. So there's a lot there's a lot that that is you know happening with this right with this with this storyline and I am curious as to again how the personalities are going to are going to form and are going to develop going into WrestleMania is Rock going to stay heel like is Rock going to just Fully turn heel. Is Roman going to change in any way? Because you've got The Rock and Roman Reigns sort of like, right now, they are aligning themselves with one another. 
And that's why I said, how are we going to get The Rock and Roman Reigns to be on opposite sides of each other? And Cody as well is also in the equation. Because I'm assuming it is going to be Cody going at Roman, but Rock stepping in front of Roman. Oh, you know what? Maybe that. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's what I'm thinking. Cody goes up to Roman and says, I'm facing WrestleMania. The Rock steps in front of Roman and says, you don't get to make that decision. I do, and I'm going to beat Roman for the title. And Roman goes, yeah, you heard him. He's, wait, what? You're going to beat me for the title? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean you're going to beat me for the title? And The Rock is going to be like, well, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just spitballing. I'm just spitballing. The Rock could be like, well, you know, you've done our family a great service, but... I think it's time you give it to the true head of the table, which is me. You know, I, I've been I've been holding down the fort with the Anawaii family for so long, and you've done a great job. But you know, you 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 didn't think you were really going to be the head of the table forever, did you? And and it's the thing of like, all right, I'm just going to take this now. And then Roman's like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 I, I'm not giving this to you. I've been doing this right. I've been I've been I've been rocking my shit this whole fucking time. And you haven't been doing jack shit, and all of a sudden you show up and you you, you call yourself the head on show. That's not how this works, Baldy. Okay, step aside. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you, and I'm gonna beat Cody, right? And that's see, and that's and that's the thing, of like I'm gonna beat you. Yay! I'm gonna beat Cody too. Boo! You know, it's like, and then Rock is like, whoa, whoa, I, I'm gonna win, and then Cody's like, both of you can suck each other's dicks. I'm winning. And that's what I think is going to happen. I could be wrong, but that's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a, a pot that is just consistently being stirred around of like, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to win. That, that's it. That's pretty much it. I'm going to win. You know, like that. that's pretty much what you could just boil it down to. So, I, again, I could be wrong, but I think that's what's going to happen. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's the best direction that the story like could go. I, I, that's just what I feel. Finally, Insider also says that while initial reports indicated Jade Cargill would end up on Raw, she hasn't officially been assigned to a brand internally. I, Jade Cargill, she fucking better be at WrestleMania. That bitch better be at WrestleMania or I swear to God, I'm going to find the strength that I'm going to flip a fucking car. Why you got homegirl showing up Right and showing out, and then she has to remember the entire sequence of numbers in the pie equation, and she can't. And they go, "Ah, you know what? Then I guess you're not ready to be a mathematician. I, I guess you're not ready to be a professor. Get out." And it's just like, "What? What are we doing here, man?" Now, before I go any further, I just want to preface this by saying she should remember. She she should remember the moves and the the spots and the and the call. She should remember that. I'm not giving her an excuse to just go out there and be a dipshit and, and, and be the fucking Tin Man out there, you know, with no oil. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that you are prolonging her career. You are. You're prolonging her WWE career by doing this, and. On one hand, I understand because you want to be, you want her to be safe. You want her to know what she's doing. I, I get it. I, that's the argument that I'm trying to make is that I, if you keep her out for too long, then, you know, people are kind of not, people are going to, they're going to, they're going to cool off to her and they're not really going to be used to her in the ring. And she hasn't even, I mean, she was in the, the, she was in the Royal Rumble, which is great, but she hasn't really been in, like, a five-star knockout match yet, I would hope, and I think that Charlotte getting injured really threw a wrench in that plan, because since then, we have not seen and really barely heard of Jade Cargill. I mean, she really didn't make a statement until she showed up at the Royal Rumble, and that was pretty much it, but even then, we haven't really seen all of her yet, Right, and I think that plays a factor in how the fans receive her. Like they love her, and I, which is good. And WWE has been doing a a fantastic job of really treating her like a big deal. But I think I think you've got an issue here where it's like a wound, and it's like if you don't treat this wound, it's going to get worse, and it's going to get infected, right? And it's going to be all nasty. 
if you don't put Jake Cargill in the ring sooner rather than later, I think it's really going to put a dampener on things. It's really going to put a dampener on her career as a whole because it's like, well, I think that you could have easily had something to do with her now instead of just sort of having her float around. And Well, not float around. That's not really true. I'm talking as though that she's ready to go and they just don't have anything for her. I think it's just, it's, it, it's giving, it's giving that. Like, we're not really going to do anything with you right now until we know you're ready. And it's like, okay, but how much more ready does she have to be? I mean, I feel like her whole run in AEW really should lend some type of credence to something, right? Because if you're, if you are trying to tell me that WWE takes these guys in and then they just, they, they like reset their leveling on purpose to be like, all right, you're going to, you're going to do the thing where you put your hands, your hands behind your, your head. And then you like, you, you, you scoot across the ring on by your feet. I don't know what to call it. Like shuffle, you strafe, you strafe, you're strafing across the ring. And then you do the thing where you hop over the ropes. I get that conditioning. I get it. But it just sort of feels like they, they, they look at Jade and they go, well, she doesn't know what she's doing, so let's help her out. It's like, okay, but she does know what she's doing. She may not know everything, right? And and this is the thing about WWE and AEW and JPW. There's different wrestling styles. There are. There's different wrestling styles for all wrestling promotions, right? I'm sure every single wrestling promotion has their own, like, tinge to it, their own little, little, little twang, their little sauce, right? And WWE's got their own little sauce to it. WWE's got their own, like, branded sauce, Right? And I feel like Jade Cargill just doesn't wrestle with that little branded sauce added. And I think that's what they're trying to get her to do. And I'm worried that they're taking too long. And it's going to be WrestleMania like a week before. And and they'll have Jade Cargill ready, but they just won't have anything to do for her because it's a week before WrestleMania. And it's just like, she should be having something going now, like right now. You know? Am I wrong? I feel wrong in this, but I don't care. Because I love Jade Cargill, and I think she's great, and I want to see her in the ring, but I don't want to see her throw somebody onto their neck, or, you know, go for a dive, and she looks like a, an octopus in a washing machine. You know what I'm saying? So, all in all, I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. But, at the same time, come on, get her out there. You know, that's all. Folks, on that note, I need everybody to do me a favor. Okay, I need everybody to gather up their necessities, your toothbrushes, your loofah, if you've got one, a change of clothes, and make sure when you get your shampoo, you put it in a different bag, not in a different uh, uh, suitcase or something. I mean like a bag, like a plastic bag or a, a, a Ziploc bag, preferably a Ziploc bag, a strong one, so that in case it bursts, it doesn't get on your clothes. And follow me as we now head over onto the train to make our way to Rumination Station. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here. We've arrived to Rumination Station. Oh, hold on. I have to scroll down. Okay, there we go. Hello. How's everyone doing? in the literal millisecond that it took for me to get to this next. Anyway, so, today's episode. Why do we call the seasons spring, summer, fall, and winter? This is by Davin Hiskey. Davin, that's a name. I'm not, listen, Davin, I've never heard a name like that before. Shouts out to Davin. Mr. Hiskey. This is posted on February 2nd, 2024. So, before spring was called spring, it was called Lent. In Old English, beginning in, hold on, I'm getting in a good position, beginning in the 14th century, that time of year called springing time, a, quote, springing time, a reference to plants, quote, springing from the ground. In the, in the 15th century, this got shortened to springtime, and then further shortened in the 16th century to simply spring. Summer came from the Old English name for that time of year, Sumor. This, in turn, came from the Proto-Germanic, Germanic, trying to re- okay, yeah, Germanic Sumer, which itself came from the Proto-Indo-European root Sam. Sam means to be a very, oh, Sam seems to be a variant of the Proto-Indo-European Sem, meaning together slash one. Huh. Cool. 
okay. My dumb ass is sitting here going, okay, but what is that? Why does it, like, what does that have to do with hot? It doesn't have anything to do with heat. It's it's the name of the season, okay? Maybe the heat is all together. Maybe that's what it is. The origin of fall as a name for a season isn't perfectly clear, though it's thought that it probably came from the idea of leaves falling from trees, particularly the contraction of the English saying, fall of the leaf. It first popped up as a name for a season in late 16th century England and became particularly popular during the 17th century, at which point it made its way over to North America. Autumn, meanwhile, came to English via the old French autumn... Autumn pen. A-U-T-O-M-P-N-E. Is the P silent? Autumn pen. <laughs> Jesus. From the Latin autumn... Autumn, autumnus, autumnus, autumnus. From the, from here, things get murky. But it's thought autumnus probably came from a estru, estrican, estrucan word, and is probably related to the Latin augury, augur, a u g e r e r e, augur, a -U -G -E -R -E -R -E, augur meaning to increase. Now, see, that would make sense if it was summer. Anyway, calling the season autumn first occurred in English in the 12th century, though it was a rarity until around the 14th century. It then began to pick up steam and became common in the 16th century. About the same time, fall popped up as the name for the season. Huh, okay. Before the season was autumn or fall in English, though, it was called harvest. I guess because... That's when, that's around the season when you would get all of your crops and what have you. So that makes sense. Winter, meanwhile, derives from the Proto Germanic Wentrus. Ooh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Wentrus. Ooh, maybe, I don't know. This, in turn, probably comes from the Proto Indo European wed, meaning wet, or wind, meaning white. Oh. Either way, the Proto Germanic Wentrus gave rise to the old. English winter as the fourth season of the year, and the name for the season has stuck around ever since. So everything, so all of this really happened around like the old, the old English uh, era. Incidentally, you may also wonder why the seasons are called seasons. The word season in this context comes from the old French saison. So s e i s o n saison because it's French. So saison. You know, meaning sn meaning sowing slash planting. God, I can't read. Meaning sowing slash planting. This in turn came from the Latin sation sationem, meaning sowing. Initially, this referred to actually sowing seeds, but later, as with the old French saison, sa yeah, saison. It shifted definition to refer to the time period where you sow seeds. So literally, seed time. Wow. Season, in this sense, in English, popped up around the 13th century. It was also around this time that season was the first... That season was first used to refer to seasoning food. In this case, from the Old French, asonia, meaning to ripen. Ooh. A-S-S-A-I-S-O-N-E-R. Asseoner. Ah, oh, man. And I took three years of French, and when I tell you, fucking nothing retained, okay? So, okay. Spring was springing time, or spring, because the crops, or the, the, uh, the plants sprung out of the ground. Summer came from the old English name, which a lot, which pretty much all the other seasons came from. Uh, Sumor, from that... The old English name for that time of year. Oh, okay, sumor. Okay, this in turn came from the Proto-Germanic sumer. So, sumor, S-U-M-O-R, an old English name from that time of year. And then the Proto-Germanic sumer, which is S-U-M-U-R, which itself came from, which that, that came from the Proto-Indo-European root, Sam. Sam seems, seems to be a variant. It's a variant of the Proto-Indo-European Sam. S-E-M. Meaning together slash one. Now, I don't know what the together slash one has to do with summer. But, so, together slash one is Sam. Which is a variant of, no. 
which Sam is a variant of, which is a root word from the Proto-Indo-European, which, which came from the Proto-Indo-European, which itself came from, no, and the, the word Sumor came from the Proto-Germanic Sumer, right, which came from the Proto-Indo-European, which, listen, if you're having a hard time following this, that's fine, okay, I'm, that's why I'm reading it over again, so the idea is that all of this came from Old English, and it also derived from different types of languages, that's basically what is being said here. It's all being derived from different languages. Proto-Indo, Germanic, right? Uh, Proto-Indo, European, right? Proto-Germanic, that sort of stuff. And then uh, autumn. So fall uh, isn't perfectly clear. It's thought that it probably came from the idea of leaves falling. You know, fall of the leaf, fall. Right, popped up as a name for a season in the late 16th century, like pretty much all of them did. I like how the 14th and 16th century, they were like, we should really start like figuring out what's happening here, you know? Um, particularly popular among the 17th century. That's when they really started coining it. And then autumn came to English via the Old French. So there's Old English. That is where summer and spring came from. Autumn came from Old French. Autumn with, a, I guess, the silent P, from the Latin autumnus, right? Things get murky, because, you know, dark ages and whatnot. It's thought autumnus probably came from an estrucan word, probably related to Latin auger, meaning to increase. Calling the season autumn first occurred in English in the 12th century. Uh, it was a rarity until around the 14th century. Then it began to pick up steam and became common in the 16th century, which again is how all the seasons happen. And then winter is proto-Germanic, just like spring. No, just like summer, just like the word sumer. That is also proto-Germanic, right? And the proto-Germanic word for winter is wentrus and probably comes from the proto-Indo-European, just like, hold on, just like summer, right? Just like summer. Proto-Indo-European, uh, wed, so the acronym for Wednesday meaning wet or wind, which meant, so wed, no wait, wed meaning wet, or wind meaning white, okay, so it wasn't, it was, wed means wet and wind means white, okay, which, you know, winter, wet, snow, slush, white, snow, you know, right, and then either way, right, Proto-Germanic gave rise to the Old English winter as the fourth season of the year, and the name for the season has stuck around, right? And then the seasons themselves came from the Old French, so these also came from Old French words, saison, S-E-I-S-O-N, saison, right? Meaning sowing slash planting, right? Because, you know, different types of the year, different seasons of the year is when you plant different stuff, right? So... This, in turn, came from the Latin sationem, right? S-A-T-I-O-N-E-M, sationem, meaning sowing. Initially, this referred to actually sowing seeds, but later, as with the old French saison, it shifted definition to refer to the time period when you sow them, right? So before, it was literally sowing them. Now, it's just like, hey, this is when you, this is when you do it, right? So literally, right, so literally, quote, seed time. And then season, in this sense, in English, popped up around the 13th century. It was also around this time. It was also around the same time that season was first used to refer to seasoning food. In this case, from the Old French, asonir, meaning to ripen. Don't fucking tell me that I do not teach you things on this, on this show, on this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So on that note, all right, I'm going to need everybody to, to asonir their brains with this knowledge, okay? And take that to the bank. And at the and, and, and while you do that, I hope everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow. And as always, big hugs. Big hugs all around. <laughs>